Hi, this is Quincy Coleman here for another special installment in the Black Pride Movement web series. Um, I recently was watching a video by Dr. Umar Johnson called Message to the Black Woman. I felt like it was a wonderful video that uh, gave us great insight into some of the problems that black women face. And also, it can relate even to black men. And it was just a wonderful video. I learned a lot. And um, Umar is a... <laughs> a doctor in psychology so rather than me try to explain to you what he's saying I'd rather you just watch him yourself so without further ado Dr. Umar Johnson let's move why a seminar just for black women everybody wanted to know you how you gonna tell us about us I didn't come to tell you about you I came to tell you about us are you with me and I came to tell you about what you do wrong to make sure you don't end up with a wrong one of us and to make and, and, and to check what you are doing to make sure you end up with a right one of us. Only one out of every four black women will get married. Most of them will get divorced shortly thereafter. We're going to talk about why. Sisters suffer a relatively higher rate of date rape and domestic violence. We got to talk about that. Due to poor support networks in the black community, many sisters tend to suffer in silence. Depression amongst black women is extremely high, and it's even higher amongst poor, isolated black women who ain't got another black woman that she can trust. I'm going to tell you something. Black brotherhood is in a bad condition, but black sisterhood is 50 times worse. You feel me? If me and him got a beef, me and him got a beef, we can squash it. It may take a couple days or weeks. Y'all will hold on to something for 20 years. And y'all suffering in silence. Do y'all feel me? And I'm going to tell you something else y'all do that I don't like. Some of you, not all of you, and hopefully not most of you. The younger sisters, a lot of black women do not take younger sisters under their wing. How the hell are you jealous of a 16-year-old? So what? Her behind is bigger than yours. So what? She had too much KFC. That ain't no chicken. You ever ate that meat? It tastes like noodles. <laughs> black women are often underdiagnosed for depression and they're not given meaningful therapy. Many sisters have been traumatized by past relationships and abuse and need to talk. And need to talk. Okay? Three goals for today. What I want you to walk away with. Help you better able to understand your relationship pattern and why you tend to attract the same type of man. Help you explore the unconscious relationship between unmet psychological needs from childhood and the type of men you date. Help you see the relationship between self-confidence, self-esteem, self-love, and the treatment that you accept. In other words, many of you are allowing men to mistreat you because you have a core belief in your gut that you deserve to be mistreated. Did you hear that? Rather than beat yourself up, you let him do it so you don't have to take responsibility for the self-inflicted pain. Fathers and daughters, it all starts there. Your relationship with your father, the one you had or never had, has been and will be very influential in shaping how you choose your mate. Most importantly, your father made you feel. Most importantly, how your father made you feel about yourself as a child may be the greatest unconscious motivator for the type of men that you attract and are attracted to. You constantly attract the same type of men, it's because they're feeling a need that daddy did not. When we are born, we have two emotional jugs. One says mommy, one says daddy, and they gotta be filled the hell up before you start dating. If it ain't filled up before you start dating, you start trying to do what? Compensate. And that's why so many of our 14 to 17 year old girls walking around with a, with a baby in here because they're looking for the love that they never got from their father and they try to get it from a young boy. They're not hot in the pants. They're looking for that jug. The jug ain't filled up. And you know what's so sad about it? What makes this sick is guess what? Your love, the fatherly love, can't come from a romantic partner. That can only come from the biological father or a replacement. It can't come from the romantic partner. And some sisters, because of that need for a dad, put too much responsibility on the romantic partner. He can't be your daddy. I do not want to hold your hand in a relationship. I do enough therapy my damn self. Are you with me? So you got to find a surrogate for that, somebody you can pour into and trust. And hopefully he ain't attracted to you on the other end because then he'll try to manipulate that into something sexual and make the situation worse than what it was, okay? You got a lot of 70, 80 year old men who still think they got it and they don't. <laughs> your relationship with your father. Was your relationship with your father neglectful? Was it abusive or was he absent? If your relationship with your father was neglectful, that means you, you tend to become emotionally needy and you need a lot of attention from your partner. If your father was abusive, sexually, physically or verbally, you tend to be an untrusting woman and you desire a man who can protect you. Now we're gonna talk about later, this is a problem. You wanna know why? Because women who are molested and raped tend to look for men who are very aggressive to protect them from further pain. The problem is he becomes your new abuser. Was your father absent? 
Women who have fathers who are not there tend, tend to be physically needy, which means they always need a man in their presence, and they crave reassurance. They need you to constantly reassure them of the relationship. Know what your daddy did wrong, okay, so you'll know what to do right. Love versus lust. If you are not adequately shown love by your father, you may have a difficult time discriminating between the love and lust that you have for a man. Women without strong emotional bonds with their father are more likely to mistake lust for love, especially when the sex is good. He hit that spot. Booyah! I love you. No, you don't. You in lust, but you don't know what love is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay? That lightning strike. Boom! I love you, boo. Well, damn, it's been kind of quick here. <laughs> are you intimate with the man's personality or are you intimate with his penis? Which one is it? Which one is it? Which one is it? <laughs> if the lightning rod stopped working, would you still be in love? Yeah. Okay? Do you love to be with him or do you love to be with his hardware? <laughs> Stop lying to yourself, ladies. Stop lying to yourself. Master the four elements, here we go. Men principally are looking for four basic needs to be met. Four primary, there are others, but these are the primary. Number one is food, Satis satisfy the appetite. Two is fantasy, satisfy the sexual appetite. I didn't say freaky stuff, okay? The freaky stuff comes after a commitment. Are you with me? Okay, if you got the type of bond with a man, so be it, you do what you want, but generally that's the stuff you need to save until after marriage. Now, the no sex before marriage, I don't believe in it. You know why? Because once you've had some cookies, you got to sample the cookie before you buy. Once you drove a car, don't you need to drive a new car before you know what it is? And that's even good for a woman who's sexually active because you want to make sure he can please you 360 degrees. That's the curse of premarital sex. And that's why it's good for us not to have sex before we get married. Because if you never know what it is, you don't crave it. And so if you've only had one woman or one man, you can be totally content because you don't know that there's others who are worse or better. But once you've sampled cookies, and you've been in all kind of cookie shops, okay? You tend to know whether you want the hard cookies or the soft, chewy cookies. <laughs> Umar, you fresh. I'm just playing. Friendship. A man is looking for you to satisfy the need for a trustful companion and confidant. And you got to be a confidant. Ladies, I'm going to be honest. Y'all talk too much. Damn. Brother divulge something to you. You got to tell your girlfriend. But guess what? She got a confidant. She got to tell her girlfriend. She got a confidant. She got to tell her girlfriend. Now the whole damn room know. When a man tell you to keep your mouth shut, you keep your mouth shut. He's trusting your trust. And then feminine phenotype, mental and physical attractiveness. I want you to understand what this is. Because I see a lot of women spend a lot of money on trying to make themselves look physically beautiful. There's nothing more attractive, nothing more attractive than the self-confidence that comes from a black woman. That's right. Are you hearing me? A man can walk into a room and see five physically attractive women. And then you got a sister over here who, by many standards, people wouldn't consider to be attractive. But the confidence is there. The self-respect is there. The self-esteem is through the roof. He's going to gravitate to her. And even if he marries you because he wants something pretty on your arm, you can best believe that you might be his wife, but she is his queen. So those are the four. How many other women? It's real simple. Ask yourself, how many of these you satisfy? I satisfy two, but there's a possibility that there's two other women. I satisfy one, there's a possibility that there's at least three other women. If you satisfy all four, you're good to go. It's really just that simple. You don't want to cook? Okay, he's getting fed. You married and you don't want to do the little tricks he into? He'll get them elsewhere. Now, I'm not telling you, because some brothers got some issues. <laughs> Are y'all with me? I've heard some stuff. I'm like, hell no. I don't care how many rings he gets you. How many die? You don't do no stuff like that. That's not even us as African people. He's been watching too many videos in that porno channel. Get that taken off the cable. Okay? So you still keep your standards even in marriage. Okay? I'm going to tell you what else you mess up. A lot of you mess up when you get married, you stop being the woman he fell in love with. Yes. Wait a minute. When I met you, you was into this and you was into that? You was into this and you was into that. You always kept yourself looking good. You was always confident. You was on a go. You had goals. And soon when I married you, your whole life became me. Damn. I don't want me to be your whole life. You follow me? If that's the case, I just date the mirror on the wall. I can look at the mirror to see myself. I don't need you to be a reflection of Umar. Be who you was. And don't let a man take you away from being that because an insecure man wants to lock you in a house because he's afraid of the competition. And that's why some religions, and I'm not going to name them because I was raised in one of them, some of them as they are practiced as they are practiced, 
play right into the hands of an abusive man because they preach the type of stuff that they want to hear anyway, like the woman's place is in the home or the woman's place is in the kitchen. Are y'all with me? So you got to be careful about that because men tend to gravitate to those types of faiths because it backs up what the ego desires anyway. Yep. Now, you should not be dating if you're still in love with another man. You should not be dating if you still have pain from another relationship. And you should not be dating if you are unhappy with yourself. Understand this. Two unhappy people cannot make a happy relationship. Why don't we understand that? You miserable as hell. He miserable as hell. How y'all going to be happy? How? You obsessive, compulsive, and he narcissistic. That ain't going to work. Emotional neediness equals unhappiness. Women who are preoccupied with having a man in their life are seldom happy because they don't give themselves enough time to find a suitable mate. A needy woman will take any man even if he's not good for her. Because you're needy. You got a magnet in here that says, I need a man. I have low self-esteem. I need attention. You'll never be happy because you don't give yourself enough discipline, time to search and find what's best for you. If you're emotionally needy and you always need a man standing in your face, you'll never be happy. You'll take the first thing that comes because the man for you is not a man. He's a drug, an intoxicant. Mm. Almost divorced. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ladies, I know when you marry your brother and you're done and you're ready to move on with your life, but there's no such thing as almost divorced. I'm all, are you divorced? You say, I'm almost divorced. <laughs> what the hell is that? No, you're either in or you're out. You understand? Because when a woman is almost divorced, you can almost go back. He can almost get some more cookie. You understand? So don't give me that. You got to finish one thing to start another one. And no man is going to take you seriously. Totally seriously. Even if he's feeling you like that, if he know you're married, because you can wake up tomorrow and decide to go back for the kids. Finish it. Okay, I heard you can get a divorce for what, $50? They even take the access cards in it? Look, get the divorce first. Okay, don't be wasting no brother's time because he won't take you seriously. And the longer the divorce takes, the quicker his trust dissipates. Okay, there is no almost divorced. Are you almost gay? What? Almost gay? We'll talk about the lesbianism in a minute. But what I find in a lot of sisters who practice that lifestyle, and I love all my sisters, like I love all my brothers, is many of them were severely hurt by black men. They were severely hurt in childhood. They were severely hurt as teenagers. They may have been raped on a date. They may have been sexually molested. And that leads to rejection of black men. And some decide that I don't want to take the chance of being hurt again. I'd rather spend my life with a woman. Are y'all with me? I don't know a single case of black homosexuality or lesbianism that I cannot trace to some sort of psychological experience in childhood or teenage years, which is why we shouldn't beat up on them. Some brothers, I don't beat, I'm a therapist, I don't believe that. Just like they go into that, they can come back out. And I know people who've come back out, so you never reject them. And another reason why we can't reject our lesbian, homosexual, African brothers and sisters is because they have the highest suicide rate in our community. You hear that? You cracking jokes, talking about them. Next thing you know, you see their face on the front of the Daily News. They kill themselves because they're so isolated. You know what we want to do? Because we want to run at them with the Bible. Oh, you sin, read the chapter Levitic. The Quran said any man let... You can't go that way. They are victims. Stop treating victims like they're the perpetrators, y'all. What happened to our compassion? That Southern hospitality, we so nasty with each other. We so bad now that if I speak to somebody on the street, they don't even speak back if they don't know you. You notice that? I said, how you doing, sister? Wait, do I know you? Damn, you got to know me to say hi, you evil, nasty, single-ass thing. I'm playing. <laughs> now, date rape. Date rape is a reality. And not only is date rape a reality, date rape happens at all ages. Did you hear that? Some sisters think I'm 40 now. I'm 40. Ain't no man. A 50-year-old man is still stronger than you. A 40-year-old man is still stronger than you. Please be careful. Date rape still happens. 28% of all women are raped by husbands and boyfriends. 35% of women are raped by acquaintances. 5% are raped by other relatives. And only 26% of rapes are reported. This is from the United States Department of Justice. This means what? If you get raped on a date, you knew the guy. You're not getting raped by strangers. Just like our daughters at home ain't being molested by strangers. They're being molested by big brother, big cousin, 
next door neighbor. Y'all got to watch that, especially with your girls, your boys as well, because when they get molested, that sets off a train of events. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? You got to protect them little girls. I know you go over to your sister's house, and y'all going to watch some soap operas, and you want to send her upstairs with her cousin, but you don't know what her cousin's been exposed to. And if her cousin been molested, guess what? He might try to molest her, or she might try to molest her. Never leave your children alone unless you can say without a shadow of a doubt, I know what the kids have been exposed to that I'm leaving her with. I'm telling you. Because they experiment on each other. Right, molestation is off the hook. Incest is off the hook, too. Okay? Protect those babies, y'all. You can't leave them on everybody. You cannot do that. You got to stop doing it. You got some moms that just want to keep dropping them off. Keep dropping them off. You cannot do that. Okay? If you can't leave them with a blood relative, okay, you got to be careful. Because people are sick. People are sick out here. 31% of women are raped by strangers. First dates. First dates. And this is for my teenage sisters and my sisters in college for the first time. You know, they get to college, they get buck wild. Now they're up in some guy's dorm room. Okay, he don't want to give, she don't want to give them none, so, so they take it. And you know, in some states, in some states, you have to prove forced entry for him to be convicted. Now, how does a woman prove that a man forced his, what was it, scars or something? But you got to see, it ain't going to be no scars, because if I'm physically stronger than you, I can force that cookie jar open. You follow me? But the law is written to protect men. Y'all follow me? You got to prove that he forced himself on you. So the best way to deal with this is what? Stay out of the situations. 68% of date rape occur between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. I'm not saying go on a date at 7 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Breath all yakking, sleep in your eyes. We can go to McDonald's for a number two biscuit and gravy. <laughs> rape and alcohol. 45% of attackers were under the influence of alcohol and drugs when you drink with a man, realize that you are increasing the risk. And some of y'all drink with men on first dates in his house or your house. Are you crazy? Most women who get date rape get raped because he's under the influence, because he has an alibi. He knew what the hell he was doing, but he had an alibi. Number one treatment for the emotionally unstable sister, shut your womb down. Shut it down. Lock, boy, I see some, what do you mean? Yeah, shut it down. You got to shut the womb down. If you are psychologically unhealthy, if you are dealing with depression or some unresolved pain, what I want y'all to realize is that the vagina of a woman is a back route to her unconscious mind. The vagina of a black woman is a back route to her unconscious mind. So how do you sort out all your unconscious problems when you're still letting unknown energies come up into that unconscious mind? Are you with me? Are you with me? And you, if you want to know how much unconscious data or how many unconscious issues you got to resolve, how violent are you during sex? Let me say it again. The more violent you are during sex, the greater the likelihood of your unconscious issues that you have not dealt with. Yes, women who scream more want to be beat on. Women who want the man to uh, engage them as if it was a rape. Yes, y'all don't do therapy, y'all do, y'all do, okay? Are y'all with me? So if you're one of those women, I met one brother the other day, you know, he told me, he said, Brother Umar, help me out. I was making love to this sister, and she was bad, and then she just starts talking in another language and grabbing stuff and punching me in the back. I said, damn, what the, are you a woman or a man? Unconscious energy, unconscious energy, that's right, that's right. If you want all of that, it's because you got issues. In other words, you're using his lightning rod to massage your unconscious, hoping to make you feel better. There is nothing more toxic for a woman than to be giving herself to a man while she has unresolved emotional, personal issues that need to be addressed, black woman. Your candy jar is a direct psychic route to your unconscious. Whoever's energy you allow to be injected into your internal universe can affect your state of mind and psychological health. You got 10 different men's energies swimming in your unconscious and you wonder why you're crying and you don't know why. You're sad and depressed and you don't know why. You're drinking and you don't know why. you like Freddy Krueger, mother. <laughs> How did Freddy Krueger got here? His mother was raped by what, 20 different men? And he's a little piece of every different one of those. Women, you got to go on a sexual fast and shut the wound down. Shut it down. Some of them too loose anyway. Shut it down. <laughs> 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 
The more unresolved pain and hurt that a woman has stored in her heart, the more violent she will be sexually, the more violently she will want to be treated. They believe that aggressive sex will drown and numb their unconscious pain. Did you hear that? You think that the aggressive and violent sex will numb your unconscious pain. Selfishness versus oneness. It's amazing how many selfish people want to get married, failing to realize that marriage is about blending your mind, body, and soul with another person. I want to get married, but I just want to do what I did. See, ladies, what you got to realize is many of you are getting married for an ego attachment. Do you know what that means? He looks good on my arm. His money would look good in my pocket. You understand? His car would look good around my body. That's an ego attachment. And I've never met anybody who was happily married after five years who got married for an ego attachment. Understand this, and this is one thing that we as black people get wrong because we tend not to use our money, save our money, and we make less of it than a European. We tend not to realize that money does not make you happy until you wasted your whole damn life chasing it and realize you're still miserable. The two predictors of lifelong happiness is what? Do you have purpose in your life? Do you have purpose in your life and do you like your job? Are the two biggest predictors of happiness. Do you have a purpose? And your purpose got to be something more than just living for me. Are you with me? Very important because the lessons that you got to realize your daughter is watching you. A hundred years from now, you won't be walking this earth. But guess what? Your great great grandchildren will be affected by the way you dealt with men or didn't deal with men. When the Bible says that the sins of the father will be visited unto other generations, that is so true for mental health. Because if I'm an alcoholic, I just increase the chance that my son will be, that my grandson will be. If I'm a domestic abuser, I just increase the likelihood that my son will be, that his son will be. If a woman is promiscuous, you just increase the likelihood that your great granddaughter will be. But guess what? You'll be dead and gone. You won't be able to come back and fix the problem that you started. One reason divorce is so high in the black community is because people are unwilling to compromise their individuality for the sake of the unit. Oneness. Oneness, not two-ness, ego extension. He makes you look better. You also get married because you're looking for an emotional savior. savior. He will save you from the pain that he didn't create. Stop getting married because you think the man is going to save you from your hurt. Work that out before you get married. Too many sisters are saying, I need a man to make me happy. I need a man to make me happy. Can't no man make you happy. Happiness is an internal state that only you can create for yourself. And the third reason, material makeover, the gold diggers. <laughs> Whoa, I done went too far. You want them to finance your lifestyle. Four reasons for the rise in black divorce. Broken verbal and nonverbal contracts, unspoken assumptions, and unknown pain body awakens. We're about to talk about the pain body. Let's talk about broken verbal and nonverbal. A nonverbal contract is when we date it, you always cook for me. So when we got married, you stop. When we did it, I was able to get at least one cookie a week. Now that you married, I only get one cookie a year. You just broke an unverbal contract. I know y'all said I, even I couldn't do that. <laughs> y'all fresh. Okay, unspoken assumptions. I assume that since she was the woman, she would do the cleaning. I assume that since she was the woman, she would spend most of the time with the kids and not me. Okay, unknown pain body. We're going to get into that. But these two is based around what? Not knowing your mate not communicating, and not screening effectively. Brother Seville said it well. When he said, when y'all meet a man, y'all ask all the wrong questions. I want to know how many kids you got, how much money you make, what kind of car you drive, if you got good credit. I'm going to give y'all the good credit, though. <laughs> okay? Nah. Like he said, did you grow up with your mother? Did you grow up with your father? Were you ever sexually abused? Did you ever have sex with a man? Don't ask him if he's gay. I'm going to tell you as a psychologist, if you ask a man if he's gay, he will say no because that ain't his definition. Did you hear me? Uh-uh. Did you ever have sex with a man? And I'm going to tell you something else that you need to ask for because he should have it anyway if he's working. I want to see a copy of your criminal clearance and your child abuse. If you never abused a child, you should have no problem coming up with that. Are y'all with me? Now, you're not going to discriminate a brother who's been to jail, because most of us have. I have it. Not yet, but it's coming sooner or later. They'll get me. <laughs> right? Now, here's my thing. The reason you want to see the reason you want to see the criminal clearance is you want to see what type of crime. You feel me? OK, you used to sell drugs. or used to gangbang. OK, you beyond that, we can move forward. But if you got serious stuff on there, like vandalism, you follow me? Armed robbery. Those are the things. Murder. You need to know that kind of stuff, ladies. 
That's right. Start asking for the FBI clearance, criminal clearance, child abuse. I'm serious, because you letting these men around your kids. I deal with it every day. Mother go to the store, her boyfriend and raped the daughter by the time she got back. I deal with it every day. You'd be surprised. And you know what's so trifling? is when you get a mother who say it was her fault, she deserved it, because she was dressing like that around them. One thing you got to understand about black people, when we were taught self-hatred, self-hatred wasn't just about you hating me or me hating, hating you. Self-hatred is also hating the product of our relationship. That's right. I know women who absolutely hate their sons because he looked just like their father. That's right. I know men who won't spend a day with his daughter because she looked just like the mother. You see that psychological transference? It happens all the time. That's why I got to screen these men better. Unknown pain body. E being evenly matched. Now, I got to talk to you all about this because you get a lot of sisters who say, I want a man who's of the same income level. I want a man who's of the uh, 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 same religion. Okay. And uh, the problem with that, good sisters, I'm leaving one thing out. It's the same religion, same educational level, and same income. Same religion, same educational level, and same income. All I'm saying to you is this, the chance of that is slim. Are you with me? What you should be looking for is a good man. If you're making $100,000 and you're the CEO of the public school system, I might can't match that. I can, but maybe somebody else can match that, okay? Yeah, no, I'm serious, though. And some of y'all pass up on good men because, like Brother Seville said, you're comparing him to middle-class white men. You can't do that. They run the country. We don't. You got a man, and he's a sanitation worker, but he's treating you good. He willing to go half on the house. He willing to take care of your kids that he didn't even make. But he, nah, I can't be with him because I got a master's and I wear a suit to work and he put on those old stinky trash man clothes. You want to pass up that? You crazy. Come on, black woman. Stop putting us on that level. And even when you educated, you go through it because you know what I get? I get a woman who want to live in a white suburb. I'm not going there. My kids ain't growing up with Bobby and them. I'm serious. It ain't going to happen. My kids ain't going to know white school. That ain't happening for mine. You follow me? So I'm saying look at the man for what he is and what he's willing to do. You got a brother who love you and want to commit to you. How do you turn that down? See, you got to recognize what karma is. Karma is when you had the good brother, you treat him like S-H-I-T, so the universe sent you a whole line of negative, no good mother else. That's right. And I'm going to tell you something else about the universe. Some of y'all want to cheat. You say, well, you know what? I'm looking for a good man, but I'm going to just keep him on the side because I don't like being lonely. Guess what? Until you let him go. You won't get what you're looking for. You cannot treat the universe. That's right. That's right. Well, I just keep him on the side so he can sample cookie or take me out. You can't. The universe know what you're doing. The universe know what you're doing. Guess what? The brother that the universe wants to send you, they got him ready. They got him ready. But they ain't going to send him because if they send him, you're going to hurt him. And it ha happens the same way with men. That's right. That's right, sisters. Slavery and the reversal of the male-female order in the household. Remember what slavery did. It did what? Turn the men into women and turn the women into men. Sisters, you got to work on this and I know it ain't easy because you've been put in a leadership role in the black community for so long, some of y'all don't know how to get out of it when you find a man who can lead. Did you hear that? I had a sister tell me last month, Brother Umar, my husband is good. I know I ain't got to worry about nothing, but I was always trained in my family that you never let a man make any decisions, that you always run him and blah, 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 blah. And she, he's about to leave her. You want to know why? Because she can't stop trying to be the man of the house. You see that? Ladies, you got to watch it because y'all can slip into it real easy. Were you dictating all kind of stuff? I know a lot of brothers about to lead their wife right now because she won't let him discipline his own son. Every time he, he, he sends him to the room for a punishment, you know what she's doing? Jumping in the middle. Jumping in the middle. Okay, so when white supremacy start mistreating that boy, you're going to wish you let the father be a man. We've been through that. We know how to make those men because we know what white supremacy is going to do to those boys. So let us do that job. Stop trying to control everything in the house. And do you know why you're so over-controlling? It's because you have so little control over your emotional state that you think you can compensate by controlling everything in the external world. Don't effeminize a man. You want to lose him? Keep on berating him. Like, like Brother Seville said, that mouth. Y'all ain't got to hit it, brother. Y'all say something that'll just straight crack our heart. And we act like it ain't matter. Then we be like this going to the kitchen. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> we ain't going to tell you. We ain't going to give you that. But we be like, damn, I can't believe she said that to me. 
Domestic oppression is not the same as domestic abuse. Racism has affected black men so much that many of us oppress our families, our women, and our children by not allowing them to have a say in the family. We rule our houses by fear, which is very unhealthy and pathological. Don't date a man who is domestically oppressive. Do you know what that means? He's the absolute ruler. He rules by force. He tells you what to do, how to do it, where to go, and how to get there. Don't you get yourself in a relationship like that. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of educated black men are domestically oppressive. And they believe they got a right to be oppressive because of their education and their looks. Are y'all with me? You better be careful. Treating you like a five-year-old girl. And these men also tend to be very narcissistic. And some of y'all put up with it because he's cute, or he got a nice car, or a good job. But is it worth the damn pain? Being single is no excuse for raising undisciplined children. We talked about passive, aggressive, and balanced parents. You want to be balanced. ADHD is absence of daddy from the home disorder. Will I skip one? Staying married for the sake of the children. I have no problem with any of you who choose to stay married for the sake of the children. I have no problem with that, but do me a favor. If you stand married for the sake of the children, make sure the children aren't suffering because you're trying to save face to the community. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? I got people right now, I'm like, look, this is not working. Your son is coming to school crying. Your daughter writing letters talking about something she wanted to hurt herself. And y'all staying married because you're both Christian and that's the way it's supposed to be. So the children got to catch hell so y'all can save face at that mega church y'all belong to. Are y'all with me? I totally respect people who stay together until the parent, to the students go to college and then they separate. I respect it. But don't do it at the expense of the children's emotional health. If that man is beating on you, cursing you out, whipping your son up like that, so much so that DHS got to come out, that's a man you need to leave. For he kill you and then you will be separated. Here we go. Many men have four women in their life. Not all. Some of them got one woman and they happily with that one. I totally reject the notion that black men cannot be satisfied by one woman and can't commit to only one woman, okay? But if you want the honest truth, the honest truth is that a lot of brothers tend to have a four woman rotation or less, okay? First there's the wife. This is the one he married 10 years ago. Don't know why he did it now, but he married it 10 years ago. You got the ring on, okay? Then there's the wifey. Who's the wifey? The wifey is when the queen and the wife are not acting right. She the number one contender to become the wife or the queen. You feel me? The baby girl, that's the one he can have a good time with without any talk of commitment. This usually is his source of comfort and peace of mind. They tend to be good friends, but she'll never get up here. Who's number one in his life? The queen. The problem with the queen is he lives for the queen. He rides for the queen. All he think about is the queen, but he is not that important to her. I'm gonna give it to you again. I'm gonna give it to you again. You got the wife. This is the one I married 10 years ago, right? I don't know why, though, all right? Then I got the wifey. The wifey is the number one contender. If I do get divorced, she might get married. If the queen leaves me because I want the queen more than the queen wants me, I'm chasing her around, but she really don't want me. That's part of the attraction, okay? Then the wifey could end up being the queen or the wife, but she's in the number one contender spot, and she's cool with that. She's going to wait her time. She may get it. She may not. And then there's the baby girl. The baby girl might want to move up or she might like where she is because when he's with his baby girl, all they do is have fun. And it ain't just sex. They go out, they have a good time, they're good friends. She's his baby girl. You understand? But the point is the wife ain't really threatened by the baby girl. She's threatened by the wifey. But what she fell to realize is although he's sleeping with her, he wished he was sleeping with his queen. The question ain't whether you married to a man. The question is, are you his wife and his queen? That's the question. Okay? Wife, that's the paper from City Hall with the ring on your finger, but all you is queen. Does he ride out for you? And I'm going to say this to you black women, and I want you to think about it because I'm talking to you like I talk to my six sisters. When you know that your man is cheating, and I got this on the slides, but I'm going to go to it right now because it's, it's urgent. When you find out your man is cheating, the first thing you're supposed to do is nothing. Listen to me. You're supposed to do nothing until you calm the hell down and decide. <laughs> Let me get a drink of water. Was it worth y'all coming out today? That's what I want to know. Was it worth it? All right. I'm going to tell you where y'all mess up. You find out your man cheating. Don't go tell your girlfriends because they're going to make you feel this big. Don't go tell them. Half of them wanted them anyway, and he probably hit about two. I'm going to just be honest. But listen to me. 
Listen to me. Listen to me. You find out that he cheated. You so first you're supposed to calm down. Recollect yourself emotionally. Don't go to your hating ass girlfriends. And you got a decision you got to make before you confront him. You know what that decision is? Are you staying or going? Because some of y'all got a lot of damn mouth and you stay. And you know what happens after you told me you know what I do when you stay? Guess what? I don't feel so bad about it because after all, I do have your consent. Did you hear what I just said? The best thing you could do if you know you ain't staying is act like you don't know. The respect level is still high. He's still sneaking. You want to know why? When a man sneaks, it's because you his number one. I didn't say it was right. But when he's extremely careful, it's because he don't want to lose you. You the number one. I'm not going to say leave your man because he cheated. If you feel that you got to, you do it. I'm not going to say not. But I'm going to tell you when you do leave. You leave when you are no longer the queen. When you are no longer his number one, that's when you leave. Because when a woman was up here for so long and she drops, you could best believe she keep on dropping like a professional boxer. Are you with me? And before you know it, you ain't even in the ratings no more. So when I go, a woman say, Brother Umar, I want to leave, I'm going to say, is he a good provider? Does he take care of the children? Does he love that woman? And if he loved that woman, it's time to pack. Nah, that was just a piece of ass. You sure you want to get that up? Well, I want to find somebody who don't cheat at all. Good luck, boo. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm being honest. Too many women can't wait. He'd be home in five minutes. I'm going to burn his clothes. I'm going to write cheater on his car. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you curse him out for five hours. He eat a couple cookies and everybody go to sleep. Yeah, and y'all done been there. Yeah. Yeah. You leave when you're not number one no more. You leave when you know he's in love with another woman. Because if he's in love with a loving woman, you're definitely number two now and you're not number one. Are y'all with me? Yes. That's when you go. Mm. He went out. He made a mistake. Mm -hmm. If you want to confront him, be my guest. Mm. I suggest you keep your mouth shut. Mm. Or deal with it in a very slick and indirect way. <laughs> Have a conversation without having a conversation to let him know, I know, and it better cease real quick. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, if he got you in here, if he got you in here, he's going to straighten up. Because no man wants to lose a good woman, which brings me to my next point. I know it's, what, 13 black women to every one black man? So it looks like you outnumbered. Let me tell you something. I'm professional. Let me tell you something. You're not outnumbered. Let's look at that 13. Out of that 13, about six of them got 12 or more kids. Cut. Right? Now we're down to seven. Two of them are crazy as hell. <laughs> And I can't risk dating her because she will embarrass me in public. She will be on my car butt ass naked in the morning trying to get my attention because she think I didn't cheat it. Are you with me? She'll be at my lectures throwing water on my computer and everything. You she too crazy. That's right. And when, and when I had my for brothers only, because you know I'm going to do this for the men, I'm going to say, brothers, I'm going to tell y'all something. Some of y'all be dealing with crazy ass women because the cookies is good. You got to stop doing that because I don't care how good the cookies are. When they bust them car windows out, be all up on your Facebook writing obscenities, you're going to wish you never had none of that oatmeal raisin. You're going to wish you ain't had none of that dark chocolate, that butter pecan, that almond, <laughs> that vanilla. That, okay? So that's how that go, ladies. I didn't say don't address it, but be firm and make sure you ain't selling no wolf ticket. Because if I'm in love with you, I know you. I know you ain't going no damn well. This lightning rod, you ain't leaving me. That's why, and we know, 45 minutes, kids go to sleep, cookies, and everything wake up the next day. Don't open your mouth unless you mean it. Are you with me? All right, let's roll. I know you guys just got done watching the video. Uh, amazing, right? As soon as I watched it, I could instantly see uh, how some of the things Umar was saying applied to my life, my relationships with, with <laughs> women in my life, and how some of the females in my life uh, had the same problems that Umar was talking about. Um, I ask you to watch the video, study it closely, take what he's saying, and try to take things and apply it to your own life. Take some of the solutions that he talked about and try to fix your own situation. Um, once again, study. Dr. Umar has a lot of great videos. Uh, like I said, rather than me having to you know, explain it to you, I let Umar do it. And it was just a wonderful video. So please leave your comments and what you think. 
Um, coming up, coming soon on the Black Pride, I'm going to give you some uh, updates. I'm going to be releasing my economic plan within the next two weeks. My economic plan for the city of Detroit, black business district in the next two weeks. Um, also, African Shea Butter and Oils coming soon to the site. Um, so you'll be able to purchase that. You'll email me. I'll put in the order. And then we'll, we'll deliver them to you or, you know, you can pick them up. So that's coming soon. We haven't figured out the setup yet. So thank you for watching this video. Once again, research and um, never stop in your search for knowledge. Thank you.